Have you ever picked up a small stone and wondered, where did this come from? What is it made of? But have you ever wondered if each of these rocks has a story? Every rock, from the one under your feet to the giant mountains, has a long and fascinating story to tell. To unravel these stories, in this video, we'll travel deep inside the earth to discover what are minerals and rocks, the three main types of rocks, how they are formed, and how they keep changing through the amazing rock cycle. By the end, you'll see the world beneath your feet in a whole new way. So, let's begin our journey into the world of rocks. What are minerals and rocks? Before we understand rocks, we need to know what they're made of. Minerals. A mineral is a naturally occurring solid substance found in the Earth's crust. It has a definite chemical composition and crystal structure. For example, quartz, mica, feldspar, and calcite are all minerals. Each mineral has its color, hardness, and shine. Now, when two or more minerals come together, they form a rock. Rocks are all around us. They constitute the backbones of hills and mountains and the foundations of plains and valleys. Beneath the soil you walk on and the deep layers of soft mud that cover the ocean basins is a basement of dense rock. Rocks are made up of different minerals, broken pieces of crystals or broken pieces of rocks. Some rocks are made of the shells of once living animals or of compressed pieces of plants. What a rock is made of, the shapes of the grains and how the grains fit together all provide valuable clues to help us unlock the rock's hidden history within. Types of rocks. Rocks are not all the same. In fact, scientists group them into three main types based on how they are formed. One, igneous rocks. Two, sedimentary rocks. And three, metamorphic rocks. Let's explore each one. Igneous rocks. Our Earth was once a ball of molten material, hot, fiery, and full of lava. When this molten magma cooled down, it solidified to form the very first rocks, igneous rocks. That's why they're called primary rocks. Igneous rocks are formed by the cooling of a very hot molten material called magma, which originates deep inside the earth. There are two categories of igneous rock, extrusive and intrusive. Alternatively, the magma may not reach the surface of the earth, and this leads to it cooling very slowly deep below the surface, maybe over thousands or millions of years. This is known as an intrusion. The slow cooling process allows the crystals to become quite large and easily seen. One such rock is granite. It is coarse-grained, usually light in color, and has clearly visible mineral crystals. While granite intrusions did originally cool slowly at depth, Uplift, erosion, and weathering over millions of years mean that they can be seen on the surface of the Earth today. Magma rises towards the surface of the Earth because it is hotter and lighter than the surrounding rock. It can reach the Earth's surface through a vent or fissure when it becomes known as lava. Such an event is known as an extrusion. Due to exposure to air and water, it cools quickly, and because of this, the crystals that make it up are usually very small and this is described as fine-grained. Basalt has tiny crystals and is dark in color. Did you know? The Deccan Plateau in India is made mostly of basalt. Intrusive igneous, plutonic. Intrusive igneous rocks are formed from magma that cools and solidifies deep beneath the Earth's surface. The insulating effect of the surrounding rock allows the magma to solidify very slowly. Slow cooling means the individual mineral grains have a long time to grow, so they grow to a relatively large size. Intrusive rocks have a characteristically coarse grain size. Extrusive igneous, volcanic. Extrusive igneous rocks are formed from magma that cools and solidifies at or near the Earth's surface. Exposure to the relatively cool temperature of the atmosphere or water makes the erupted magma solidify very quickly. Rapid cooling means the individual mineral grains have only a short time to grow, so their final size is very tiny or fine-grained. Sometimes the magma is quenched so rapidly that individual minerals have no time to grow. 
This is how volcanic glass forms. Characteristics of igneous rocks. Hard and strong. Made of interlocking crystals. Usually not layered. Contain very little or no fossils. Sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are recycled rocks formed by the deposition of fragments of material, sediment, that have been eroded and weathered from other parent rocks. They often consist of sand, pebbles, minerals, and mud that's been removed from the land by erosion, carried by rivers or blown by the wind, and eventually deposited. Sediments are usually deposited in seas and lakes, but they can also accumulate in desert environments. They are often deposited in layers known as strata. As the layers accumulate, one on top of another, they become buried underneath younger sediments, and they become compressed into solid rock. Horizontal layering of sedimentary rocks. Towards the top of the picture, there is a layer of sedimentary rock made up of sand and pebbles, known as a conglomerate, deposited between finer grained, that is, made up of smaller fragments, rocks. Some sedimentary rocks are made from deposits on the sea floor that consist almost entirely of the shell fragments of dead sea creatures. The shells are made largely of calcium carbonate, and when they are compressed, they form a rock called limestone. In other cases, the accumulation of large amounts of dead plant material may, over millions of years, turn into coal, which is another type of sedimentary rock, clastic. Clastic sedimentary rocks are made up of pieces, clasts, of pre-existing rocks. Pieces of rock are loosened by weathering, then transported by erosion to some basin or depression where sediment is trapped. If the sediment is buried deeply, it becomes compacted and cemented, forming sedimentary rock. Clastic sedimentary rocks may have particles ranging in size from microscopic clay to huge boulders. Their names are based on their grain size. Chemical. Sedimentary rocks are formed by chemical precipitation. This process begins when water traveling through rock dissolves some of the minerals, carrying them away from their source. Eventually, these minerals are redeposited when the water evaporates away or when the water becomes oversaturated. Biologic. Biologic sedimentary rocks form from once living organisms. They may form from accumulated carbon-rich plant material or from deposits of animal shells. That's why they often look layered, like a cake. Examples of sedimentary rocks are sandstone, made from sand particles, shale, made from clay, limestone, made from shells and remains of sea creatures. Sedimentary rocks often contain fossils, the preserved remains of plants and animals, because they form in calm water bodies where dead organisms get buried. Characteristics of sedimentary rocks. Soft and layered. May contain fossils. Made from compressed sediments. If you look at cliffs or canyons, you'll often see the different layers clearly. Each layer tells a story of how the Earth looked millions of years ago. Metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks were originally a sedimentary rock, an igneous rock, or even another sort of metamorphic rock. Metamorphism literally means change in form. Rocks that are deeply buried underground can become subject to very high temperatures and intense pressures. Being in these environments for millions of years will change the rocks physically or chemically, or both. Sometimes, already buried rocks may come in contact with hot igneous material and, without becoming molten themselves, they become baked or cooked. This is known as contact metamorphism. When limestone is subjected to metamorphism, it becomes harder and more crystalline and changes into marble. When a shale rock is subjected to metamorphism, it may change into slate. Foliated. Foliation forms when pressure compresses flat or elongated minerals within a rock, causing them to align. These rocks develop a platy or sheet-like structure that shows the direction in which pressure was applied. Non-foliated. Non-foliated metamorphic rocks lack a platy or sheet-like structure. There are various ways to produce non-foliated rocks. For example, rocks like limestone are made of minerals that are not flat or elongated. No matter how much pressure is applied, the grains will not align. Another type of metamorphism, contact metamorphism, happens when hot igneous rock intrudes into existing rock. 
The existing rock is essentially baked by the heat, which changes its mineral structure without adding pressure. Characteristics of metamorphic rocks. Very hard and compact. May have bands or layers due to pressure. Shiny surface, no fossils. Marble, for instance, is used in buildings and statues because it looks beautiful and can be polished smoothly. Rocks might seem ordinary, but they are the pages of Earth's history book, recording every volcano, every sea, every mountain, and every change our planet has seen. If you enjoyed learning about rocks today, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Edgescope Planet for more fun science lessons. And remember, every rock you step on once had a fiery, watery, or magical story to tell. Mm -hmm.